The objective of this video is to introduce the terms Ka, Kb, and Kw and to understand how they are connected to each other. By now you know how to write equilibrium expression for a system in equilibrium. Equilibrium means that the forward and the reaction rates of the reversible reaction are going to be equal. So when we have an acid in an equilibrium, we can write an equilibrium expression for the acid. Now we call this process as acid ionization. That is when we put a granted lowry acid into water, we call that as acid ionization. Recall that granted lowry acid means a species that can donate protons. When acid donate proton, it results in the conjugate base. Once the acid lose the proton, it will result in conjugate base. And the species that accept the proton is the base. And once it accepts the proton, it becomes the conjugate acid. Now in this acid ionization process, water is actually our solvent. We consider it as a solvent rather than a reactant. However, the solvent can act as a base in this ionization process. Now you can go ahead and write the equilibrium expression for this acid ionization. The general format is the product concentration divided by the reactant concentration. When it comes for the acid equilibrium, we simply denote this Ke2 as Ka, just the same equilibrium expression. We are giving just a few new uh, symbols. Now, Ke2 is the same thing as Ka, and what are your products? You have the conjugate acid and the conjugate base, and you're taking the concentrations. Do not forget the coefficients if there's any. Now, each and everything in this expression, you have the coefficient 1, so we just don't show it. We have the product, and then we are going to put in the reactant, we have the acid. However, we do not put water in the expression. Why? In this case, water is in excess. It's working as the solvent and the concentration of the solvent hardly changes. So the concentration really has no effect in this expression. Um, and therefore, we are not including water in this expression. Now in acid, we have two different types of acids, strong acids and weak acids. How we separate strong acid and weak acid is based on how they dissociate or ionize in water. If an acid can completely or nearly completely ionize, meaning breaking down into H plus and the conjugate uh, base. If the acid can do that completely, we call them as strong acid. Some strong acid that you're already familiar with is listed here. And if you check the Ka values for these acids, you will notice that they have really large numbers. Now what this means is your Ka is equal to this number. So for strong acids, your Ka is usually larger than 1. What does that mean? If you write the equilibrium expression for a strong acid, if you are getting a larger Ka, that means you have lot more product than reactant. So if I write the expression for this acid 
equilibrium. My products are H3O plus. The chloride ion. My reactant is going to be HCl. Since my Ka is very large than one, it means these two concentrations you have large amount, large concentration. Your numerator have to be a large value and your denominator has to be a small value. That will result in an answer larger than one. So what does this larger numerator mean? You have more of the ions. So that means in strong acids, the, at, when the system is at equilibrium, what you find mostly in the solution is H3O plus and Cl minus. We are using HCl. So that means the equilibrium favors the product. And on the other hand, if we consider weak acids, which are mostly organic acids. You can see a lot of carbons and hydrogens. Look at this Ka value. What this means is a really small number. Now this number is less than one. In weak acid, your Ka is usually less than one. Why we get a Ka less than one? If you write the equilibrium expression for this one, what it means is you have fewer products and you have a lot more acid in the unionized form. That means you have a larger denominator. This concentration is large and these two concentrations are small values that will lead you to an answer smaller than one so what it means is when the forward and reverse reaction rate are equal in that reaction mixture what you mostly find is ch3 co2 h not the ionized form. So these in weak acids, the equilibrium favors the unionized species of the acid. So by looking at the Ka values, we can have an idea about the acid strength, how strong or weak the acid is. So Ka is actually a term that tells you the acid strength. And this Ka is like an identity for a given compound. However, it can change with respect to the temperature. The concentrations of the solution really doesn't matter. Ka is an identity. For a given substance at a fixed temperature. At a given temperature. Now these Ka values that you find most often, they are defined for 25 degrees Celsius. All these numbers that you see usually are defined at 25 degrees Celsius. Ka value depend on the temperature, not on the concentration of the solution. So that is why we can use the Ka value as an identity to show how strong or weak an acid is going to be. Same way we can define a base ionization constant. So that means if we have a base put it into water, if the base is going to ionize and reach an equilibrium, we can write the equilibrium expression and in place of Keq, we use Kb, which is the base ionization constant. 
And the same way you did the acid ionization constant, you can have the equilibrium constant, you have the product and then reactants. And again, since we have water as the solvent, it's in excess, its concentration is hardly changing, so we do not include water in the expression. And you can write the equilibrium expression for the products of the base result in conjugate acid and whatever the species that is going to act as the acid will result in the conjugate base. We have the two products. Concentrations and the original base. We do not include water as it is the solvent. Again, in bases, we can have strong or weak bases. Now, these are most commonly used six strong bases. Now, these bases usually have hydroxides. You can see all of them holding hydroxides. And what else do you see? You see metals. So when metals are paired up with hydroxide, they can act as bases. And the type of metals that make soluble salts, recall the solubility rules. These lithium sodium potassium they are in group one group one metals always make soluble substances so what does that mean if these compounds all these ionic compounds if they dissolve they dissociate they completely dissociate and because they completely dissociate they can generate oh minuses and they can the oh minus can act as a species that can accept a proton. Now the Bronsted law base is a species that accept proton when for example lithium hydroxide it is very soluble it will break down as lithium plus and OH minus this OH minus can act as the Bronsted base why this has the ability to accept a proton if you add a proton it will readily accept it and make the conjugate acid. Okay. Now, similar to Ka, Kb defines the strength of the base. So again, this is an identity depend on temperature, not on the concentration. When it comes for weaker acids, they do not dis, uh, dissociate or ionize completely. If you consider again strong bases similar to Ka values, the Kb values are going to be much larger than 1. Why? If you write the equilibrium expression, you will have more products than the unionized species. So your denominator, if you write the same expression for this, your denominator is going to be small and your numerator is going to be very large. So you end up with Kb values larger than 1. For weaker bases, your Kb is going to be smaller than 1. Why? When you write the equilibrium expression, for example, this weak base, when you write equilibrium expression recall that we do not include the water because it is a solvent this means you have a large denominator this is a very small number that means the concentration of ammonia is large and all the concentrations of these two is going to be very small that result in a kb value smaller than uh, one so again 
you can use the KB values directly to determine uh, the strength of a base. If it is going to be a strong base or a weak base. If it is a strong base, Ka is larger than 1. If it is a strong ba uh, weak base, it is going to be smaller than 1. Now we are going to look into the auto-ionization of water. Water is a bit weird solvent. It's a weird substance. Water can act as both base and an acid. That means if you have two water molecules close to each other, one molecule can act as the acid and the other molecule will act as the base. The acid will donate a proton and resulting the conjugate base and the base or the molecule that choose to act as the base will accept that proton and it will become the conjugate acid. Now the species that can show this behavior are called as amphoteric or amphiprotic substances. In the same way, we can write the equilibrium expression for water where this process is at equilibrium. The only difference is that in the case of KEQ, we put KW. So again, you can use the general formula, product concentration divided by the reactant concentration. The general formula is product and the reactants concentration. Now our product of this Ka is the same thing we denote as Kw. So I'm going to put Kw and my product are H3O plus and OH minus. Now I'm not going to include water. Why? Again water concentration is hardly changing and water really doesn't like to ionize this but anyways it's ionized but water prefers mostly to stay in h2o form rather than the ionized form so the concentration of water is again going to be very large that it is not going to change significantly so we do not include H2O in our equilibrium expression. Now this result in the expression that you see here. Now this is an important expression you need to memorize. At 25 degrees Celsius we have found that this Kw value is 10 to the power minus 40. See how small that is you see a very small number, what does it mean? That means you have very small concentration of H3O pluses and OH minuses at 25 de degrees Celsius and you have a really large concentration of water. Now we are going to see how Ka, Kb, and Kw are related to each other. Let's take ammonia ionization in water. Now, ammonia is a weak base. Water can act as a solvent, and also it can act as the base. Now, the base is the species that accepts the proton and water is going to act as actually the acid. Now, ammonia has a larger Kb value than water, so ammonia is going to act as the base. So water will act as the acid. Acid is a species that will donate proton. You can see what has happened to uh, water. Now, once acid loses the H+, it resulting the conjugate 
base and when base accept that proton it results in aggregate considering the forward reaction which is ammonia in water again water will function as a solvent and also as the acid it will result in ammonium ion and OH hydroxide ion. For this, when this reaction, we can write the equilibrium expression. And what are we using? Is it Ka or Kb? How do you decide whether you should Ka or Kb? Use the definition of Bronsted acid base. Bronsted base is a species that accept a proton. What is ammonia doing? We are writing this expression for ammonia. What is ammonia doing? Is it accepting a proton or is it donating a proton? It has accepted a proton. A species that accept a proton is the base so we can write kb expression product concentration divided by the reactant concentration we have omitted water as it is the solid now we are going to look into another reaction not the reverse reaction but we are going to look into the dissociation of ammonium ion now this is not the reverse of what's given here this is a separate reaction if you consider the dissociation of ammonium ion in water this is the type of equation equilibrium equation you will get how do you decide whether you're going to put ka or kb if you're writing the expression for ammonium ion again water here it is the solvent what is happening to ammonium ion? Is it giving a proton or is it accepting a proton? NH4 plus has become NH3. So that means NH4 plus has given away an H plus, donated a proton. So if a species is donating a proton, they function as an acid. So you can use Ka. And you can put the product concentration divided by the react reactant concentration. You get the Ka expression for this given equation. Now let's go ahead and add the reaction 1 and 2. If you inspect these two equations, they are the same equations given in these two occasions. When you try to uh, when you try to add them up, you will see that certain species on two sides of these arrows are going to cancel out. For example, ammonium ion on this side will cancel out with the ammonium ion over there. How about ammonia? Now you can get the net equation. You have two H2O molecules and you have H3O and the equilibrium uh, the hydroxide concentration for this net reaction you can write the equilibrium expression and this equilibrium expression is same as what we wrote earlier what you have the product and as for the reactant what you have is water in the liquid form so we just omit it from the equation Now what if we multiply the Ka value and Kb, this Ka and Kb. You have the Ka value, the same expression you have here, which is plugged in to this place. And then you have the Kb, the same expression, substitute here. If you multiply Ka and Kb, you will find that certain terms like this ammonia to ammonia cancel out 
an ammonium ion, the ammonium ion cancel out, which is basically H3O plus concentration multiplied into OH minus concentration. So that means you end up with another relationship that if you multiply Ka with Kb, you get Kw. So this is an important expression that you should memorize. If you have hard time figuring out why or how we ended up multiplying Ka by Kb, you can rearrange things. Now I'm going to rearrange this equation to isolate OH minus. What I'm going to do here is I take this NH3 to this side. So Kb multiplied by NH3. I'm just rearranging this equation. Take this ammonium ion down here. is equal to the OH concentration. Substitute this over here. That means this expression. And then do the same thing for Ka. You can rearrange the equation. Substitute this value in place of H3O plus, and you will end up with the same setup and get this relationship. So these are some important relationships you need to memorize. The Ka multiplied by Kb will get Kw, which is equal to this at 25 degrees Celsius.